It is no longer news that the COVID-19 pandemic has had an economic impact on many sectors and businesses. Many businesses will be forced to evolve and change strategy. Today, we'll be focusing on the event industry. How has the pandemic and lockdown impacted on events in Nigeria? From cancelled and postponed events to weddings and birthday parties, will event planners consider going virtual? If you're an event organizer and you haven't actually learned how to use platforms like Zoom, like um, like YouTube Live, like Facebook Live, you know, those digital platforms, then you'll be left behind. You'll get displaced along the process. Following the lockdown order and ban on social gatherings, Nigeria foresaw its first virtual wedding. And also across the globe, such as India, Slough in the United Kingdom and other countries amidst the lockdown. Even though it seems like a good alternative in the story times, how legally binding is a virtual wedding? We spoke to Abisola Ogumbadijo, a lawyer, who gives us a legal perspective. The Marriage Act, which is the law that currently regulates the conduct and celebration of statutory marriages, which is the union between one man and one woman to the exclusion of all others, does not make any provision for online weddings. Under the Marriage Act, there are some mandatory requirements that one must fulfill before a marriage can be said to be legal and there are also some laid down procedures that must be followed in its celebration. Now in addressing this, I'm going to highlight the key provisions of the Marriage Act and compare it with the arrangement or the process of conducting an online wedding. Under the Act, a marriage may be celebrated at the marriage registry or a licensed place of worship. Now, this is extremely important as the Act is specific about the physical location where the marriage is celebrated. And that is why it is often stated that before you get married in a church, ensure that your church is a licensed place of worship as not all churches are licensed to celebrate marriages. Now, couples who have explored online weddings may want to argue that the physical location is not the internet, but the physical location is their own. Well, that's interesting, but I would like to avert their mind to Section 23 of the Marriage Act, which specifically states that no minister shall celebrate a marriage in a building that has not been licensed. Now, the effect of this is if you celebrate a marriage in your home, but that particular location or building has not been duly licensed or approval has not been obtained in respect of that location, then a minister should not celebrate a marriage in such location. And this is the same reason why couples cannot just um, go to the beach or to a garden to celebrate their marriage. Another crucial point to note as it relates to why online wedding is not valid or recognized under the Marriage Act is the provision of the Act that stipulates that during the celebration of the marriage, the officiant or the minister must be physically present and there must also be at least two witnesses physically present during the celebration of the marriage. Correctional measures that I would advise for any couple who has um, conducted an online wedding already is that they should go to the marriage registry and apply apply and follow the due process of how a marriage ought to be celebrated. My advice to people who are eager to get married or who want to explore the video conference app by getting married online is that they should seek the necessary legal advice. So if you're unfamiliar with a particular arrangement, seek the legal advice so that you can be aware of the legal implications. The couples can also reach out to the marriage registry, maybe send a mail or put a call through. And the interesting thing is the whole 
process of application can actually be done online. Yes, it is possible to make virtual weddings legal in the future. Nothing is impossible and the world is evolving. Um, I read somewhere that the United Arab Emirates now has um, online wedding service for couples who intend to get married. I also um, read somewhere that the New York governor also signed an executive order for couples to conduct their wedding online. So yes, it is very possible if other countries are doing it. It's just a matter of time. Nigeria might soon explore that um, alternative too. We also know that the government is strict on those others in restrictions of social gathering, as was evident in the case of Funke Akindele and husband JJC Skills. We spoke to event professionals about the future of the Nigerian event industry post-COVID-19 and here are the things they had to say. So the future of the event industry, um, I would say post-COVID, is first of all very, very uncertain because we are living in a time that is actually uncertain. So the future of the event industry is dependent on many, many factors. It's dependent on how quickly um, a vaccine is found, it's dependent on how we can stop the spread, it's dependent on how we can ensure that we bring in a lot of um, health and safety to our events. It, it, it depends on how one can um, you know, think of new um, things to do or how well to do um, our events. So the future of the event industry, definitely um, post-COVID, is an industry that will survive, but with a lot of changes you know, in it. Well, for our work, for, for us, it's going to be difficult because if we start to move to the virtual space, we need less people. And not only do we potentially might need less people, but we need a different type of people. So, for instance, now, if I'm going to do a live concert and um, an artist brings us on board, they're going to want us to handle all the technical aspects of it. So, whereas normally I would have had a show caller, I would have had an, an associate producer, Instead, now I'm going to need a IT technician. Mm. I'm going to need an internet broadband technician. Do you understand? I'm going to need to make sure that all my cables and all my broadband and everything, what's my backup if my internet goes down? So it changes how I do it. Instead of maybe having 20 runners, I don't need 20 runners anymore. I now only need four or five because I'm not having so many people, members of the public. I'm not looking for people all over the place for my guest artists because I'm sitting them in one place, it's most likely just an empty room or a green room, and I just bring them on stage. They're not mixing with their friends in the crowd or in the audience or disappeared off to somewhere. So it completely changes how things are done. So initially, I believe that it will be less work or we will need less staff, but as it becomes more and more popular, things will change, people will acquire new skills, and they will come back into the industry. So choose a platform first, pick a, like say pick a place. So you want to do it on YouTube or you want to do it on Zoom, you know, whatever it is you want to just pick a platform. Once you pick a platform, then try to pick a very nice name for it. Then if you're going to have a host, try to, you know, identify who is the host and who can do this well or who has been doing this hosting thing very well and understands how it works. You know, then you can now have, have your guest too on, on the side as well. Um, on platform like Zoom, it allows you to actually build like a registration within your webinar or your event so you can build like a registration link that you can share with people so if you have like a whatsapp group or a whatsapp community or you want to just go ahead and use media platforms or social media to get your guests to attend that event then you can then push the link all over the social media pages get influencers to push your link or hire a pr firm yes and towards the event you, you can send newsletter to people don't just keep quiet and wait to the event check out the list of people that have signed up send them an email and say oh thank you for signing up we can't wait to have you join us you know things like that then three days to go oh three days to go we can't wait to join uh we can't wait for you to join us we're counting that we're so excited and we hope you are excited as well you know two days to go you do the same you know one day one day to go you can you know shoot them the the video of one of the speaker and say oh this person is so excited about this event we can't wait to see you as well so that they are all in tune then when this when the event day is is, is around the corner there's a way you can mute everybody so that you know because on the zoom platform <laughs> there's so, much, so many people 
people that don't mute themselves. So you have to use the um, mute all button and mute everybody. So if people want to speak or you have room for question, then you can then unmute people and have them raise their hands. You can even raise their hands and also use the chat bar. I think that um, it's very clear that social events will never be the same again. There's no doubt about that. You know, things are gonna are definitely gonna change. I mean, there'll be lots of government restrictions in place. People are going to be careful about how they contact people, you know, because until we get a vaccine for COVID-19, which is at least a year away, we know that we are still going to have the possibility of being infected by people. So, you know, when we look at um, how we're going to manage advice going forward, we're going to have to put a number of a number of things into place as event organizers. For example, we're going to have to make sure that sanitation is very good. So we have sanitizers in place. We make sure that we keep social distancing as much as possible. We're going to have to make sure that we do proper registration of all vendors and all guests. So in case we have, we have to do um, contact tracing. Mm. And we're going to have to make sure that we actually check that those phone numbers do exist. Because as you do know, a part of the problem that um, the government has been happening is that people have been putting down fake or false phone numbers. So it's been very hard to track people down. We're going to have to spend more on sanitizers, possibly surgical masks available for the vendors, particularly people that are doing food and stuff like that. Um, we're also going to have to make sure organizers and participants um, are actively aware of what we're going to be doing and sign up to it. So they have informed their guests in advance that we will be requiring your contact details in case of contact tracing. Whilst we do events, we're also going to need to make sure that we have a room in case we notice that somebody has been sick or may look like they have um, COVID so that we can isolate them. We'll, we'll have emergency numbers on hand for things like um, isolation centers and stuff like that. Um, there's so there's so many different things that we're going to have to do in terms of managing the event. We may also have to say that we're going to restrict numbers, even if the government doesn't do it. If we still feel that COVID-19 is still very active within Nigeria, we may have to say that we will not manage events that are more than 100 people, 500 people, whatever the number may be that will be manageable. We will have to do all those things. Do you understand? The finances of event organizers has definitely been um, affected. And how? First of all, you projected, when we all came into 2020, we all had a projection for 2020, we all had the revenue, we all planned it, you planned this certain number of um, amount of events, or you organize this, or you do this. Definitely, because of that, our revenue has been cut short, um, you, are, you are forced to spend more because you are not earning as much as you would. So you are now probably dipping into your cash flow, your savings, and if you don't if you didn't save or you didn't have a cash flow balance, right? Where you did it was positive, those people would be suffering. So it has definitely affected some people's finances, people that didn't save, people that didn't um, have like a six months or a year or two years savings for you know just in case anything happens to the business how do we get paid how do we pay our staff those finances have been affected because don't forget that our industry is you know for some people it's very project based it's some people get paid per event so if you get paid per event or you get paid per um, no, um, events that you're organizing, you might, sometimes you might not have been able to save so it's, it's definitely affected the finances of event professionals the word that I have for all event planner is that there's a reason why you started this business. Uh, you did not start this business for safety or comfort. Um, you started this business for a greater reason. And now is the time to go back to the reason why you started. To be honest, there is nothing more resilient in the world than to see an entrepreneur who keeps moving and going with the belief that the light will come. So I just want to employ everyone to keep going. Um, if it takes you to pivot your business, please pivot your business. If it takes you to do the extraordinary, please do the extraordinary. If it takes you to invest in yourself, please invest in yourself. This is the time. Trust me, this is the time. To all event planners, I would say to all of us, and I'm here with you, is that we are in uncertain times, and this is a time that is happening to everybody all over the world. So we're not unique and we're not different. 
Um, it's affected some businesses badly. The um, hospitality, event, entertainment, and tourism industry has been badly hit. But guess what? This is forcing us to pause, remain calm, um, have clarity in our business, look at our business properly, look at our business model, look at what we're doing right, look at what we're doing wrong, look at new ways of doing things that we've always um, actually um, thought it had to be done a certain way. So this is a time, of course, to leverage technology, as we all know. This is a time to build our relationships. This is a time to collaborate more. This is a time to look inwards. This is a time to pause. This is a time to reflect. But at the same time, while you're pausing and reflecting, don't do it too. Um, don't reflect and pause for too long. Look for new ways of doing things. And it will be okay. It will be okay. Because I know that a lot of us are also afraid. It will be okay. I believe that God is with us. And God is, cert is certain in the time of uncertainty. So it will be fine. Considering the directive of the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sonwolu, on the 29th of April 2020, that all event centers should remain closed until further notice. All entertainment centers such as event centers, cinemas, arcade, bars, casinos, day clubs, nightclubs, beaches will remain closed till further notice. Will the virtual world become the future of events or will things go back to normal and social gathering return? Guess we will find out post COVID 19. If you're Lua Oshunke for Plus TV Africa.